Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's version of the Metaverse Show with me, Jamie Burke, CEO and founder of Outlier Ventures. This week, I'm going to be talking to a cat. Um, yep, an actual cat. It's going to get weird. Um, but it's actually called Pat Doyle, which is a bit of a missed opportunity. Uh, it should have been called Cat Doyle, I guess. Um, cat, can I tempt you onto the show? There you go. Now, normally I try not to heavy pet guests. Um, <laughs> it usually gets into trouble, but in this instance, I'm gonna I'm gonna treat him to a little tickle before we get don't, going. Don't worry, I'm declawed. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so, um, so today, obviously, you know, with a cat, we're going to be talking about NFTs and DeFi. And so, I know many of you to the show might not be familiar with either of those terms if you've watched previous episodes, you might be coming at thinking about the metaverse in the context of gaming and virtual worlds. But actually, the convergence of virtual worlds and gaming and the metaverse with things like NFTs and DeFi that are kind of foundational primitives and layers within Web3, what we refer to as Web3, what you might more commonly know as crypto, we believe is going to be foundational to that metaverse being an open one. And by open, we mean an open economy. And so we've got um, Pat Doyle, his user there is Fat Doyle. Again, it should be Cat Doyle, I guess, um, is is a bit of a degen. So a degenerate is one way that we refer to people that spend far too much time trading NFTs. Um, and uh, you can make quite a lot of money from doing it. So. By day, um, Pat is a human, and he it works at a was co-founder at a company called Genesis Volatility, um, which is a institutional grade crypto option analytics company. Again, I'm not expecting you to have a clue what that means. Maybe he can tease us with it a little bit. Um, but really, what we're going to be talking about is kind of by night when he's a cat prowling the alleyways. <laughs> he is he is exploring trading. Um, these things that we call NFTs and a particular subset of those, which is kind of generative art. Um, and in particular, we're going to look at something called hash masks, which is one of the more exciting projects in the space. And we're going to be talking about things like composability and why that's important for creators. So welcome to the show, Cat Doyle. Thanks for having me, Jamie. I'm excited to be a cat in the metaverse today. I've, I had other plans, but I think this is the best thing I could do with my time today, for sure. I, I, I think so. Now, could you just come a little bit forward to me? There you go. I don't need to fall off the edge of the, the, the table. So could you just maybe explain to us your life as a DJ? And I know it is slightly separate, but not exactly totally different to your, your <laughs> yeah. professional world. Yeah, well, I think the, uh, the moment I fell into kind of the, the crypto rabbit hole, I became, you know, forever a DJ. And so one of the, my, my, my day-to-day -day routine is building analytics for crypto options traders. Um, and that my kind of passion has always been in this space is to, um, is to always kind of like understand and use data in the crypto space to make informed decisions. And I've, I've been kind of following the growth of the NFT environment for, you know, the last two years or so, but really started as things obviously started picking up and becoming more interesting and new projects coming online. I've been able to dive in deeper and start to understand how people are using these projects, what they're doing with them, how tokens and NFTs are moving, you know, throughout the ecosystem in general. So that's kind of been my, that's my, my night, my nighttime is spent kind of diving deep into more of the on-chain data and how people are using it, what they're doing with these projects and, and kind of understanding how the DeFi composability aspect in the NFT world are, you know, starting to to butt heads and, and kind of meet. So let's talk a little bit. Let's try and do like a, a very quick one on one. I mean, we do have a broad range of people that watch this show by virtue of kind of following other formats that we do who are you know, very deep into the space. So I don't want to spend too much time pe uh, teaching people to suck eggs, but I think it would be good for for newcomers to just get like a very high level understanding of um, how you define an NFT and how you describe <coughs> DeFi. And obviously I can kind of jump in and we, we can, we can yeah. jump in a little bit. Yeah, so I mean, for me, I mean, I'm by, by virtue of kind of when I got into crypto, everything that I'm interested in is really built on Ethereum for the most part. 
Um, and for me, I really define any, an NFT as anything that meets the, you know, the 721 standard, uh, token standard. So however people want to express that, you know, via different projects, that's cool with me. I'm more like based on how is it, how is it written and what the, what does the code say? And so that's kind of where I've looked at, at the NFT space and how it's developed is kind of looking at how many of these projects are coming online using these token standards. And then as it relates to the DeFi space, you know, that's looking at how, from my perspective, looking at how ERC 20 tokens are being utilized in different protocols and projects. And then kind of, you know, now we're at the overlap of these two worlds kind of meeting. And that's where I think it's going to, things will start getting kind of interesting. Right. And maybe, um, <clears throat> Maybe just to kind of qualify. So when we say an NFT, we mean a non-fungible token. What that means effectively is that you've got something that is both digital and unique. And, you know, that is pretty revolutionary. Most things that are digital can be copied innumerable times. They can be shared innumerable times. They don't hold value. But because of blockchains, and as you say, you know, primarily now, um, things like Ethereum, what that means is you can have... Um, a digital token that exists on the Ethereum blockchain, and there are several others, of course, um, which is unique but is transferable. And so you can you can sell it. Um, well, firstly, you can mint it. You can then transfer it. You can sell it. You can auction it. And then when we start to look at things like uh, DeFi, you can um, borrow and lend against it. I really love how Pat's getting into. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely uh, you you, um, you you have a career in performance art if you want to move on for being again. Um, so that's like an NFT. When we think about DeFi again, it's primarily been based on Ethereum, which is why you've got this kind of uh, NFTs are becoming types of collateral for borrowing and lending in DeFi. But DeFi is effectively decentralized finance. So what that means is that you can begin to borrow and lend against traditionally cryptocurrencies or stable coins. Um, now NFTs um, without the need for a bank, without the need for an intermediary. And so the kind of combination of these two things brings the potential for this financialization of the creative industries. And, and so like maybe we use that as a, a bit of a segue into bringing that to life with some examples. So um, I don't know if you want to start with Hashmas or you want to start with maybe CryptoKitties. That would be a good kind of segue. Um, and then we can go from crypto kitties to hash mass and why it is that you love hash mass so much and and as i said earlier in the intro this this the importance of composability from a creator perspective yeah well yeah sh sure so from like the the crypto kitties was one of the original you know for those who aren't familiar with it as a a, a kitty myself right crypto kitties was one of the original nft projects on the ethereum blockchain and basically it was the idea that you can generate a a token that represents a digital cat on the ethereum blockchain and by owning that cat you could begin to breed that cat with other cats now the cool thing about it was every cat that you would breed with had specific traits and the offspring of that you know, could carry some extremely rare traits, extremely normal traits. And and then there became kind of the secondary market for, you know, collectors of crypto kitties, where people would buy and sell cats that had specific traits. Like myself, I look like an average cat, so I probably wouldn't sell for much, but you know. Disappointingly average, actually. I, I know, I know, that's, it's unfortunate. This is all I, this is all I can be. But the, the interesting thing now was, you know, people start to, to value, you know, certain characteristics of these NFTs more based on, you know, how rare they are, who, you know, what type of cat they were breeding with. And, and now outside of the, you know, the uniqueness of the cat, the uniqueness of the cat then drives some financial value. And because of the, the easy transferability of, of NFTs and crypto in general, like an entire secondary market of of nfts or selling and buying and selling and breeding crypto kitties kind of sprung up and i think started to inspire a lot of the growth in the nft space and so as we've started to enter like a newer generation of nfts i mean you can't go a day without seeing it on twitter without seeing it on you know on any article 
Um, and ver there's very net, you know, notable people getting into this space, talking about how it's going to be, you know, useful for for content creators in the gaming industry, for musicians. And so I think, you know, there's there's a lot of really cool use cases, and we're just you know starting to scratch the surface. But it's really cool to see what the inspiration of just a digital cat on the Ethereum blockchain can you know bring to the space. Right, and I think. Um... So one way of understanding this, and of course this is also true in the context of Hashmas, is um, the idea that it's a social game as well. So on the one hand, it is a financial market. You know, people are buying and trading, as you say, speculating on the rarity of these things. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the kind of discovery, the price discovery of that. So how do you value certain traits? And then how do you value... Uh, the individual instance of combining these traits in an asset or a cat or a hash mask or whatever it may be. Right. Like that process is a very social process, <clears throat> right? And so this is why it's highly viral. It's why mm -hmm. it creates this market. Could you talk to us a little bit about the, the, the social gaming aspect? Because I think that's what will probably hook in a lot of people who are thinking like, what the fuck are they talking about? Right yeah, now? yeah. And I, I think maybe I'll, I'll transition a little bit to the HashMask project because I mean, that's what I've spent a lot of time diving into data on. Um, so basically, just as a precursor, HashMasks is an NFT project where um, the, you know, the purchasers of the HashMasks initially get a picture of a character that has a mask and some unique characteristics like eye color, skin color, type of mask, like a subcategory of mask. But then there's also like all these like non-qualified traits that the community is starting to like say like, oh, this one has, you know, this one's holding toilet paper and this one's got, you know, this, you know, a hieroglyphic in the background. And and so people are starting to like dissect the art for like as as people would like curate art themselves, like they're starting to like identify things that the owners of the project aren't saying these are specific traits that were, you know, adding to the project itself these are open to the community to interpret and so if, as you look on like twitter if you look on OpenSea, which is a big secondary market for nfts um, you can start to see how people are like valuing certain characteristics of specific nfts and it's really interesting because like while you sit in the discord chats and on twitter you can just see the conversation back and forth and like the discovery of different qualities is really exciting and, and that's like the social aspect of it. People in these communities are saying, hey, I found art that has these and these characteristics. Has anyone noticed any other ones that have these? And so now like you have this whole active community dissecting every piece individually to find out, you know, why they why they like it, why it's a little bit more special than the next one, why maybe it's, you know, just an average piece compared to some of the other ones. And so it's, re it's really exciting to see that, like that dialogue coming through on on Discord and Twitter and things like that. And so I think as these projects continue to grow and progress, because they're still, you know, relatively young, um, you'll start to see like even more, um, you know, qualities and characteristics of these art, of these, of these NFTs being like pulled apart and dissected for like where they're finding this value or what they find is unique. Right. And so, so now we can zoom out. Hopefully that's uh, help help kind of people understand a little bit about um, this kind of category of NFT um, category. So I did that. Hey. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so much we could do with this. And you know what? It's, <laughs> it's actually brilliant that you're a cat because, of course, crypto kit. We didn't even think of that anyway. Just, the beauty of the metaverse. This it's looks just... like so well designed and scripted. It makes us look very good. Um, thank you so much, cat. Um, so, uh, but yeah, let's let's zoom out now. So let's look at the financialization of these. So on the one hand, as you say, it's a social game, and um, uh, and you know, but but like this is there's a lot of money involved in this now, right? So <laughs> right. Like every day, um, whether it's crypto punks, whether it's you know one of these others, especially within this category of um, uh, generative collectibles mm -hmm. you know people are becoming millionaires and so could you just tell us a little bit about like why that's happening the markets and of course like you know you are you're a trader um you know you're somebody that understands financial markets where most of the audience won't could you can i give us a layman's explanation of what's going on and why 
so much value yeah. to bring these aspects. I mean, I'll, I'll, I don't know if I'm aging myself in the metaverse at all, but I mean, I look at this like when I was a kid trading baseball cards or like collecting Beanie Babies. And, you know, I remember as soon as a, you know, like there's like the Princess Diana Beanie Baby and you have it and then there's a sec, you know, but to sell it, it, it becomes a pain. Like you've got to like find, hopefully find a buyer on eBay and like, you know, do all these things. But there's there's some inherent value in like the uniqueness of Princess Diana as a as a Beanie Baby. Now, not to say like all these projects are like Beanie Babies, but the idea is because it's a token, because it's in, you know, on a blockchain, because there's protocols and platforms built around it, and you have access to a global financial market to buy and sell these things, like, it, it becomes a lot easier to find liquidity for selling custom pieces of art or, you know, digital scarce items. And that's where it's really exciting is like, the, the, the reason people are, are making money in this space isn't necessarily because the art is, maybe it's, it is overvalued or undervalued, but the excitement is because there's like a, a liquidity unlocked all over the place. And this is something that like this asset class or things that are digital collectibles, traditionally like don't really have these massive markets that open to like individuals you know at a level where they can participate freely and so that's that's where you unlock a lot of the you know the ideas of, of decentralized finance is like open permissionless trading with the uniqueness of art and the digital scarcity ideas of the nfts and that's why there's like so much excitement around it and that's why and that's also true, you know, so by liquidity, you know, what you mean is that the, it's easy to kind of, there's a high volume of, of buying and selling, which is, you know, otherwise very difficult. And as you said, one of the great things about crypto, about DeFi is it's 24 mm seven, -hmm. you know, it doesn't have like opening and closing times. There's no circuit breaker um, unless, you know, particular exchange um, yeah. as an on and off ramp has a, has a problem. Um, and it's permissionless, in, in, at least in the context of DeFi, right? So anybody anybody can participate. And as a consequence of things like the, the collateralization of these things in DeFi, what it means is, let's say all of a sudden, a, a crypto kitty becomes a, blue, a form of blue chip collectible. It's prohibitively high for the average person to buy a single piece. Mm -hmm. They can actually like fractionalize it. You know, so they they can they can you know they can effectively make it possible that you can own like a small percentage of this single asset and right. It's creative not just as a medium, but then also like almost um, uh, you know unlimited creativity in terms of the financialization itself. Yeah, and and I think that's one of the things that we're starting to see. So with with hash masks, if you look at kind of just the transactional trading volume of people buying and selling a whole mask and owning it outright. It's, I mean, there's a lot of money exchanging hands and it's really exciting to watch. But like you said, there's points where you want to get fractionalization and, and own the growth of the entire project instead of, you know, betting that one piece that you own is like going to go crazy. And so, so people now are, are, and there's a specific project called NFTX, which is basically it takes, if you have an NFT in your Ethereum wallet, you send it to an NFT index and they mint you a fungible token that says you you have ownership of a mask in our index. And then that that fungible token can be fractionalized and you can own the growth of an index or a cluster of of you know art pieces. And as the value of, of the project collectively rises, your index, your your token that represents your ownership of that index will follow, you know, the growth patterns of the prices of these, these art pieces, which is really good because it, it's cool because it gives you exposure to, from a trading perspective, to the growth of the industry without you having to be like, man, I, I hope I buy the right rare one. And, and then if you miss, like, you know, I'm, I'm not for people losing money by any means. And there is a lot of risk in buying and selling some of these projects, but you know, this is a, a cool area where you can get exposure to the growth of a really exciting industry in a way that's a little bit more manageable. And 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 it, then it just highlights the, the excitement and the composability of, of kind of tokenizing anything, whether it's an NFT or a fungible token. Yeah, and I think what's cool about that is, you know, 
the reality of buying and selling um, any of these generative art things, especially hats marks, where there's greater levels of complexity, is that it's it, there's like a huge technical barrier. Like you need a lot of time and mm. attention to invest in the space in order to you know find value, discover value uh, ahead yeah. of the market, right? And so, like most people, just don't have the time or the inclination to do that. And so, the great thing about an indices is that effect or an index is effectively that you can rely upon the curation and skill of others to, to, to do that for you, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's now, one and thing I one thing I want to close off on is this idea of composability because I think for the creators out there that are watching this and you know that's ultimately the thing that I think is going to bring in um, at least ha half of the crowd. This idea of composability is critical, right? Because you were, we're talking off air about the idea that um, you can actually, through composability, um, you can you can actually almost remix previous franchises, previous mm -hmm. collectible franchises. So firstly, could you explain to us what you mean by composability in this context? And then could you give us some examples about how creators can leverage composability to you know, innovate and, and create new new works. Yeah, so so there's a couple of examples that I think are really interesting in this in this space. So one is in in the hash mask universe, you know, if you're the outright owner of a hash mask, you have, you know, that digital property is yours. And one of the things that the team over there is doing is um, if you own a piece of that art, you can allow people to buy prints of it. And that the ownership of that of that art allows you to monetize it on a secondary market for people who just want to own, you know, a print of the art. So I think that's one really cool example of just owning it from a speculative standpoint is okay. But like from being part of like a art, you know, the art community and allowing people to kind of like extract the value from the art that you own is really cool. Um, another project that is interesting, the original kind of one of the original NFT projects is called CryptoPunks and these things are in you know, extremely, you know, high priced right now. And, you know, and maybe for the fact that they're like kind of the OG project, but people are now taking kind of all those images and kind of running them through neural networks that spit out new versions of them. And, you know, it's cool because it allows people to leverage the kind of the excitement of, of the original, you know, NFT project on Ethereum but like build a derivative of it and say like, this is kind of like a V2 and it's everyone is unique compared to the first one because it takes like all the features of the first ones, mix them up and sm you know, smash them together and into a new piece of art. And so it kind of has all the characteristics of the original one, but in a different form. And, and the way people are going about creating those is really cool. So I think those, you know, you'll start to see projects like that more and more that kind of add a unique twist to uh, you know, projects that exist or, you know, take deviations in in how they distribute the, the NFTs themselves and kind of tweak those models as well. Because it is really exciting how people are kind of leveraging, you know, distribution models too. But that's a different, that's a, that's a whole yeah, yeah, that's whole show in, in <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I think what it also speaks to this idea of remixing and stuff is, you know, the power of mimetics Mm -hmm. in the context of of course the internet culture at large but specifically crypto and specifically nfts and so you know one of the ways i describe the value of ownership of a crypto punk is it's it's like social status it's saying that you're yeah. participating in the meme and so this idea that you know you you can have a franchise that can evolve um it also speaks to the that, that kind of root of mimetics right yeah yeah, it's definitely a status symbol with with the crypto punks for sure. I gotta get my hands on one still. I'm not that big of a degenerate. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, um, Cat Doyle, it's been fantastic having you on. Um, thanks for coming on the show. I think hopefully we've done a pretty decent job of giving a bit of a, a 101 as to you know NFTs and DeFi and why it might be interesting to both collectors and creators. And I think um, you know Hashmas and, and these kind of examples really illustrate the point and you know you can go down a whole rabbit hole with that so um thanks so much for coming on um, where can people find you on twitter or, or yeah other platforms what uh, yeah my twitter is doyle 126 um if you're interested in, in crypto options at all our our company's 
Twitter handle is Genesis Vol, V V O L. Um, and yeah, those are pretty much the, the two places you can find me. Those are the two worlds that I live in pretty much, mostly on Twitter. And now here, right now and in VR here, Yeah, and also you fat the VR headset just for the show, which is awesome. Um, hopefully, <laughs> we get our sales commission at the end of the month from, yeah. um, from Facebook. Let's see yeah. what happens. Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks for having me, Jamie. This is a lot of fun. No problem. Well, hopefully, we'll get you on again at, at some point. All right. Thanks, Kat. Um, awesome. So, finally, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? Um, firstly, make sure that you follow the OV Twitter handle, OVO IOHQ. We'll uh, try and live stream these things into Twitter. You can also follow us on uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash Outlier Ventures. And we kind of have like almost a sub channel specifically for the Metaverse show. Um, if you are a creator or startup working in the Metaverse space, doing anything with NFTs or DeFi, Make sure you apply to our accelerator. We're actually recruiting for the next cohort now. I think you've got probably 48 hours to apply for the next cohort, which will start in April. Um, end of April, we do that every quarter. We'll accelerate 100 startups this year, which is three times what we did last year. God knows how we're going to do it. Um, equally, if you are a later stage project, so you've already raised your seed financing, but you're looking to launch a token initiative rapidly, if you pass our readiness score, we have like nine um, classifications of how we score a project readiness. If you pass that, we can work with you to fast track um, that token launch program, TG, whatever the go-to-market strategy and help you maximize um, and capitalize on the great market conditions that we've got now in this current bull run. So uh, make sure you apply to that at outlierventures.io slash Basecamp. Other than that, I will see you on next week's show. Bye from me and bye from Kat. Wave to the camera, cat. <laughs> <laughs>